<laughs> so this is take six of this little video project. Huh? Oh, hi, I'm Ray. I just uh, pushed a button on the uh, uh, wire leads up to the camera. And then when you want to pan the camera for a different shot, you just kick the tripod and that ought to work. Hey, you're looking good. The other day I was going through some paperwork in my file cabinet and I came across this uh, this expense account from 1969 and 1970 from all the receipts for the machine shops that uh, my dad and I went to regarding uh, building the prototype of this um, two-cylinder rotary steam engine, which interested us a lot. And so I got interested in it again, in, again and thought it would be a fun video project and um, someone might enjoy it. I have uh, an example here of how uh, it would work. This is a, a piece of wood, a block of wood with two nails in it. And uh, this part here is a, is a gear that we cut out of a wooden box with a coping saw. So uh, these, there's actually two gears and they're geared together in a one-to-one -one ratio. So the wheels are the same size and the same number of gears. And when you turn one gear, the other gear We'll turn. Just like that. The, uh, <clears throat> the interesting thing about steam is that it expands like 1,600 times its volume, its area that it takes up. When you reduce the pressure, it will expand a lot with a lot of force. And that would be the pr uh, principle that this uh, piston type engine uses rather than a turbine. And we know that. Uh, um, Steam engines do work because they move trains with piston engines and they're used on uh, uh, ships nowadays with turbine engines and so the, the idea of steam or some water or some type of uh, liquid that could vaporize and then expand uh, and then be recouped with a condensing system uh, is very practical. Uh, this is an end, a little motor design and the idea, uh, and, and if you bear with me, the think of the steam coming in at the top, like the intake and exhausting are going out at the bottom. Um, there would be uh, portals or valves at the top and the bottom for intake and exhaust, and the, um, the little rotors will actually serve as, as valves too, so there isn't a separate valve system. This is uh, two moving parts to this apparatus, the uh, left part and the right part. So here's a demo on, on how it's supposed to work. Picture steam coming in here and expanding in all directions. It will come in here because it can. In this position it could not, but here it can. And then it expands and in all directions. It really can't go in any other way except this way which moves this little rotor. Then it gets to that point and this area becomes open to steam coming in. And it will expand moving this rotor under power in that direction. And then this one takes over and then that one takes over. And they go in opposite directions, so they balance each other nicely. There's not a lot of uh, vibration or thing rolling away on you and having to be stabilized. So that's that's kind of a plus for this. Well, I actually had this working with a steam boiler in a garage in uh, 1970, I believe it was, and and it did work, but not very well. It leaked like a sieve. The uh, Places for leakages to occur would be here, that's around here, and there, at the front, and the back. But it kind of went like that, and then stopped. The problem being that there would be a necessity to have seals. Like a, on a car's uh, piston engine, your cylinders, your pistons would have rings. This thing would uh, uh, generate horsepower uh, if the sealing problem were, were addressed. And I understand that Wankel engines work and they're rotary and they have a moving rotor and so uh, I think there's hope for this idea, but uh, I'm not in a position to work out seals or go any further with it than a video project that's at this time. I have the, uh, the rusty parts down in the shed and the next part of this video will be to uh, clean them up and put them together and see if we can make it spin using compressed air from an air compressor that we use in my business for uh, nailing and stapling shingles. Uh, 
very large compressor, uh, compressor, and I'm hoping that we'll get it to turn a little bit better than, than would be just, you know, forcing it through its motions with a wrench on, its, on the shaft. There are actually uh, two shafts where the nails are. They'd be like two inches. And then this hub area is four inches. And if this were to be a complete circle, it would measure eight inches. These little arcs where these come together are created as though you could imagine having a moving compass or protractor. This is cut by this which is moving. This is cut by this which is moving. There's another area where seals come in, but that's a very, very, very tight fit. And uh, so, uh, let's follow this in the next